Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about skin, fascia, bursa, tendons, cartilage, and now let's talk about bones. Bone is the hardest form of connective tissue. Bones are rigid and rich in calcium. They are vascular, unlike cartilages, which were avascular. And bones show great regenerative power after fractures, especially in the young. As a human body, you have an endoskeleton. How many bones do you have? 206. 80 of which are the axial skeleton, which includes your skull, your ear ossicles, your hyoid bone, sternum and ribs, as well as your vertebral column. And we have 126 in the appendicular skeleton on the left and on the right, including upper limbs and lower limbs. The shoulder girdle with the upper limbs contains 64 bones. The pelvic girdle with the lower limbs contains 62 bones only. If you can help me count all of the 206 bones in the comment section, I'll be so grateful. The building unit of your body is the cell. A group of cells make tissue. A group of tissues make an organ. A group of organs make system. And the systems will perform your body functions. Let's talk about tissue. It's a group of cells. How many types of tissue? Four. Bones are here. Bones are connective tissue, just like cartilage. If I flip you upside down, how come your liver doesn't fall? How come your appendix is not coming here? Because you have connective tissue such as deep fascia, internal fascia, ligaments, etc. The connective tissue includes bone and cartilage, adipose tissue or fat, even blood and lymph could be included as connective tissue, and never forget your muscles and tendons. Where does bone come from? From the mesenchyme. Where does that come from? From the mesoderm. The mesoderm gives you everything that's between skin on the outside and your viscera on the inside. By this, I mean that mesoderm will give you bones, cartilages, muscles, tendons, blood, lymph, kidney, ureter, dermis, adrenal cortex, and the dura mater. Bones serve many functions, including mechanical functions, protective functions, metabolic functions, and hematopoiesis, blood-making functions. Bones will give you the framework. It supports your body and provides attachment for muscles and ligaments. Your skeleton will transmit the body weight to the ground. Your skeleton protects the internal organ, including the brain, which is contained in the skull, the spinal cord, which is contained inside the vertebral column, the lungs and heart included within the rib cage. Your bone is rich in calcium and phosphate, can also make blood cells for you, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. During embryology, your bones are growing. Cartilage is facilitating this via endochondral ossification. This epiphyseal cartilage plate is super important. That's why fractures that involve the growth cartilage plate are horrible. They can lead to limb discrepancy. For example, your right arm is longer than your left arm because your left arm ceased to grow. How many types of joints do we have? We have three, fibrous joints, fibrocartilaginous joint, and synovial joints. How many types of cartilage do we have? We have three, hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and yellow or elastic cartilage. We talked about this in the last video. Bone is made of diaphysis and epiphysis. Diaphysis is compact bone. Epiphysis is cancellous or spongy bone. The bone is covered by periosteum, just like the cartilage is covered by perichondrium, and the tendon is covered by peritendinium, and the muscle is covered by perimesium, the heart is covered by pericardium, the nerve is covered by perineurium. Types of bone. We have compact or cortical bone, usually in the shaft or diaphysis, as well as spongy or trabecular bone, usually here at the proximal and distal ends, i.e. epiphysis. Both the compact bone and the cancellous or spongy or trabecular bone are collectively known as lamellar, which is the normal bone in adult human beings. One gives you strength, the other provides flexibility. However, there is another type of bone called woven bone. Not good. This is, if you are immature, 
or if you are sick. Having woven bone as an adult is not a good thing. Then the cells in the bone. Osteoblasts will build up bone, osteoclasts will cut down bone, and osteocytes are the actual bone cells, just like chondrocytes were the actual cartilage cells. Where did osteoblasts come from? They came from the mesenchymal stem cells within the marrow, and they will build up bone. Where did the osteoclasts come from? They came from the same origin as the macrophage. You know why? Because they eat stuff. Macrophages will eat foreign bacteria. Osteoclasts will eat your bone. They are phagocytic cells. Just like macrophages could make multinucleated giant cells, osteoclasts can do the same. When the osteoclasts are eating your bones, eating your bones, and eating your bones, they leave some bony cavities. And these are called Hoship's lacunae. If you want to activate the osteoclasts, in most of the cases, you need to activate osteoblasts first, because osteoblasts will activate the osteoclast via the rank and the rank ligand pathway. I have a special video just about this topic. Composition of bone, matrix, and minerals, and cells. Of course, you know the cells. What are the matrix? Type 1 collagen, because it's very strong. We need some growth factors and we need some organic matrix, such as osteocalcin, osteonectin, fibronectin, and osteopontin. Is this matrix calcified? Yes, it is calcified by minerals, specifically hydroxyapatite crystals. What does that mean? Calcium and phosphate. Basically, calcium phosphate and calcium hydroxide. So it looks like this. That's why if I break your bone, it can release some calcium and phosphate into the bloodstream. Of course, I will never break your bone because I love you. And that's why calcium is important for healthy bone when you're growing. And if you are sick, sometimes calcium supplements can help. Not just calcium supplements, but vitamin D supplements as well. Because vitamin D regulates calcium levels. If you want to learn more about how vitamin D helps regulate calcium and phosphate, please check my video called Vitamin D and you'll find it in my biochemistry playlist. Cartilages had type 2 collagen, that's why they are firm. But bones have type 1 collagen, that's why they are hard and rigid. Bones are vascular, cartilage is avascular. Since bone is vascular, it has higher metabolic rate and high regeneration capacity after fractures. The cells of bones are the osteocytes and the matrix is calcified, unlike cartilage. Let's review collagen types. Type 1 is in bone, type 2 is in cartilage. Type 3 is very flexible, so you find it inside blood vessels. Type 4 is under the floor, i.e. basement membrane. And type 5 is in hair and placenta. How do we make collagen? It's a long story. We start in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, pre-pro collagen, then pro collagen. Don't forget you need vitamin C for hydroxylation of proline and lysine residue. Look at this lovely triple helix. It's pro collagen and then becomes tropo collagen, then collagen fibrils, then collagen fibers. Type 1 collagen fibers are in your bones. This is an example of a post-translational modification of collagen. Pause and review. So here's my wonderful bone, here is compact bone, here is cancellous or trabecular or spongy bone. Here is an epiphyseal cartilage plate and an articular cartilage, both of which are hyaline cartilage. Inside your bone, there is the wonderful haversion system. If you want to learn more about the haversion system, check out my video called Bone Histology. The osteoclast has the same origin as the macrophage or monocyte. All of these cells are analogous. Monocytes in the blood, macrophages or histocytes in tissue, kupfer cells in the liver, microglia in the nervous system, and osteoclasts in the bones. How does bone heal? By a process known as bone remodeling, which involves osteoclasts to break down the old bone and osteoblasts to lay down new beautiful bone with the matrix and the minerals. Hey, medicosis, what are the factors that affect my peak bone mass? Put differently, why do people have strong bones and others have weak bones? For many reasons, gender, race, genetics, hormones, diet, and exercise. Now let's make it clinical. 
Inflammation is bone is called ascitis. Inflammation of cartilage is chondritis. Inflammation of muscles is myositis. Of the tendon of the muscle, tendinitis. Inflammation of the bursa is bursitis. Inflammation of the skin is dermatitis. Inflammation of the fascia under the skin is fasciitis. Inflammation of the site of the insertion of the tendon into bone is enthesitis. Next, there are two diseases characterized by decreased bone mineralization, i.e. your bone is lacking minerals, such as calcium. One of them happens in children, and this is called rickets. The other happens in adults, and this is osteomalacia. Osteoporosis, however, is different because osteoporosis has normal bone mineralization. The problem is in the matrix, not the minerals, i.e. the bone resorption rate exceeds the bone deposition rate. This is very common in old age, especially in postmenopausal women. What's the cause of osteoporosis? Well, it depends. If it's primary osteoporosis, we have no idea. If it's secondary osteoporosis, it could be secondary to metabolic conditions such as hyperparathyroidism, neoplastic syndrome such as multiple myeloma, nutritional deficiency, iatrogenic because the doctor was a doofus and gave too much steroids, physical causes such as prolonged immobilization. When your body doesn't move, it atrophies. What are the types or the classifications of bone? You can classify them according to position into axial and appendicular, according to structure into compact bone or cancellous slash spongy slash trabecular bone, according to development into intramembranous ossification versus intracartilaginous ossification, according to their shapes into long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. We'll talk about all of this in the next video. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.